Yay, great. Do you know that we have a managed Kubernetes service offering? Well, now you know. Um, as part of my uh, journey as a developer advocate, I'm primarily focused on developer experience in Kubernetes. And right now, I ma maintain two open source projects. One is the Kubernetes Bootstrapper. That's what we're going to see today. And then Mastodon on Kubernetes. That's like a new initiative of running Mastodon on production-grade Kubernetes system. But let's get started, right? And you can find me on socials at Diabe, and the QR code was just there. Oops. <laughs> Brilliant. Let's see. <laughs> well, if that doesn't work, then I'll just connect my. Awesome. What could go wrong? Okay, cool. All right, yes. There you go. You can check out the, the project. Um, so what is production grade, right? It's a loaded term. And uh, for s different people, is it's uh, production grade is completely different. But from a startup and a SMB point of view, we know the stats. Uh, many, many startups, like more than 90% of our uh, customers and users do not have any fancy pipelines going on, and most of them still run stuff on VMs. So for them, getting production grade might just be setting up this on Kubernetes. I really like this infographic that Power Native made where you, you need a couple of these facets on your uh, Kubernetes cluster to, to call it production grade. That in, in includes infrastructure, security, authentication, observability, and continuous deployment and you have your entire development workflow. But with a plethora of all these open source applications that are uh, available, it makes it really difficult to pick and choose the tech stack for your startup or SMB. And imagine if you do not have the DevOps expertise within, a, within many startups, well, most of them do not have that. There's a, this notion that every startup is a tech startup and they have all these tech savvy engineers, but most, uh, most of the startups are just getting out there, making sure that the product is just available to folks. So how do they get into this production readiness? And that's the whole uh, initiative behind putting together this uh, open source project called the Bootstrap. It's nothing fancy. It's just combining Terraform and Argo CD and using Argo CD's app of app pattern, which we will see now, to, to set up a, a framework which is flexible and then just integrates popular battle-tested open source applications. To speed up the process, right, I just have a bare-bone uh, Kubernetes uh, on DigitalOcean running, and which, is, which has Argo installed, but this is going to be like this. So we have, it's a three-step process. We have our infrastructure that is Kubernetes with Argo installed, and then we're going to deploy uh, the uh, app of apps pattern on uh, using Argo, and then I'm going to set up the production grade observability stack using Robusta. Anyone heard of Robusta? All right, we'll we'll take a look at it. Um, so yeah, let's see what's what's out here. It's it's a pretty straightforward um, Terraform. Uh, module, you just have a uh, Kubernetes, DigitalOcean Kubernetes cluster in this case, but this is vendor agnostic. You can run it on any Kubernetes cluster you want. And we use Helm provider to install Argo, and that's pretty much it. So you have this infrastructure set up, right? And then let's open the terminal. So make sure. Yeah. All right. So you have Argo installed, and that's pretty much it. Right. 
so step one is done. I did that to speed up the process. And we go into the bootstrapper. And I'll just explain what it is on a high level. The bootstrap app of app pattern is, is nothing but you install a parent application and then you configure the parent app to say, hey, these are my child apps, go ahead and install these apps. You can point Argo, you can configure Argo in such a way that it points to a particular repository or a particular Helm chart. You can override it with different Helm values. In this case, we are gonna integrate, like install Cert Manager, Traffic, uh, Ingress Controller, um, we have Trivi, Runtime Security Operator. So I'm just picking, choosing one open source app from one of those facets you saw earlier and I've configured it into a Helm configuration, which I'll show you right now, and then we're just gonna apply, apply this. We also have a values file here, which you can override, and this is done in a true GitOps fashion, right? Argo CD is basically looking at this Git repository and the remote cluster and just saying, hey, as this repository is going to be the source of truth, so any changes that you make here, you need to push those changes to this to your repository and make sure you configure Argo <coughs> such a way. While I'm talking about this, let's just go ahead and also apply because it might take time and I'm running out of time. So I'm basically just gonna apply this and we'll see what happens. Okay. As and when it's installing, let's, uh, okay. So something's happening, right? So it is installing. So we'll go ahead and log into Argo to see what's going on there. So everybody likes visuals. Um, I'll just copy paste these. I'm just basically exposing the Argo uh, server here. You can also wrap it around uh, a domain and then access it. Argo comes pre-configured with uh, default credentials. You can change it, you can add single sign-on and whatnot. So this is going to be our password. It's one time generated, I'll change it anyway. All right, you see, there's a bootstrap parent app which goes ahead and installs the bootstrap resources, which is nothing but the ingress resources, which I'll show you now. And you have the cert manager installed, your metric server, your traffic lo load balancer, and your trivia operator. The list is endless. Tomorrow, if you want your app, which isn't re residing in a separate repository, and you just want to, so you can take the bootstrapper, write a single line of YAML file pointing it to that particular repository, and just apply it and it's going to pull that particular uh, application and you can have all your ingress resources <laughs> configured here and you can become production ready, like day two operations ready. Of course, there are so many aspects of production grade systems, but this is like a very good starting point that you can take and leverage and customize it as you deem fit. So what is happening under, under the hood, right? We have this bootstrap YAML it's pretty much basically saying, this is the repository, the path is the bootstrap path. In this case, I have the feed demo. Um, it's gonna install uh, in this particular namespace. And then if you go into this directory, we've got the list of templates. So here, I have another application called the bots application, which just displays pictures of bots, pretty much. And I'm just saying, hey, if I had the bots app enabled in the YAML file, apply this manifest, Argo, and then I'm just pointing it to that particular repository, head revision, and if I need to override the Helm values with a particular storage class or whatever, in this case storage class, it just goes ahead and installs it. Similarly, you can also um, have the bootstrap resources file, which here you can have your ingress, in this case there's a ingress uh, for the bots app, which you've not enabled for this demo, but you can write your ingresses here, and then it's gonna get configured. Oops, what's happening? Let me go back. Okay, there's some network, oh, all right, brilliant. All 
Okay. Do I have time? <coughs> Right. So we are done with step two, right? In this, so if you see, we've installed Cert Manager, and let's encrypt as your certificate issue provider, um, and we've used Terraform for the infrastructure. All that's remaining now is setting up the observability stack, and we're going to use Robusta for it. Robusta is a Kubernetes monitoring platform which comes pre-baked with Prometheus um, stack, the QPROM stack and also with the Grafana dashboards, and it has multi-cluster observability. It's an open source uh, um, tool, you can check it out. So let's go ahead and install Robusta. I'm not gonna install this, but all right. So you need a, uh, to have a configuration file for Robusta, so let's head into or observability, oops, where am I? Bootstrapper, yeah, I'll remove this, and I'll just do robust gen config. So you can have Slack integrations, so imagine something is happening in your remote cluster, you want to be notified, right? Not just notified, but also provide with some solutions, and then immediately click that, and then it'll take you to whichever cluster, whichever part is failing. So let's have our Slack integration here. To Slack, to Slack. What? Brilliant. All right, this is <laughs> cool. Let's see. At least I've done it correctly, right? <laughs> if it says no, um, okay, awesome. <laughs> so I do have. Um, a Slack channel here, and I have like uh, Robusta configured this for, for this particular channel. I knew something like this would happen, so I uh, had something configured. Um, come on, come on. Hopefully this works. God. Still got time, still got time, we'll make it. <laughs> All right. I haven't received it. Well, I didn't receive the email yet, but what I can show you is, I'll go back. And then, with just a Helm chart installed here, right, with the generated values, what, what this basically is doing is, it, you're, you're telling Robusta, hey, this is a particular Slack channel that I want all my notifications in, this is my account, I'm gonna just sign in with this account. And I have another example that is already configured, which I'm gonna show you now. You just apply this uh, manifest, and then it's going to configure, install the QPROM stack, all the configurations around it, and you have your observability stack on one place. Um, this is there. Uh, so we, right now we have the the Mastodon uh, project, right? So we we are 
applied the bootstrapper project to, to the Mastodon uh, project as well. So here you can see that you have all the services running in the timeline. Um, right now there's no data. But then you get a whole platform experience of monitoring and observability using Robusta. So with these three steps in place, you are already there. And then with just fine, some fine tuning and then tweaking, you are good to go. Like it literally took us, what, 10 minutes? But then, of course, uh, within half a day or something with fine tuning, you'll be able to set up a production grade Kubernetes cluster. If you like this, just share the project, check it out. And we are looking for um, contributors and volunteers uh, for, for both the Bootstrapper project and also for the Mastodon on uh, the Kubernetes. Uh, project, so feel free to check it out, and if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer. Thank you.